All right, in our last video then, we watched how we could, or we learned how we could create a function, and we could call that function based on a click event on one of our elements. In this case, we clicked on a button, and then we use the get element by ID to get the value of that input that the user entered. And then we use that value to update the inner HTML of our paragraph tag. So in other words, if I typed in a name and clicked on a button, then we saw that this, um, this salutation or the greeting was updated with the name. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that another step further and we're going to say, yeah, but what if the user didn't type in a name? What if it was left blank? And then when I click on the button, what will happen now is in this video, we're going to create a new inner HTML response, but also notice that we've changed our placeholder to something different and we've also uh, updated the text color. So let us plunge into how that all works. All right. So before I get started on that, I want to bring home a point and that we went over last time that I didn't really harp on, but I really want to get clear in your mind now as we progress. And that is the difference between these two statements using get element by ID. I wanted to be real clear that you're aware of the difference between what we did uh, between these two statements, that being in this particular part of the code. Um, what we're doing is we're gathering, if you, if you kind of think of drilling down, uh, maybe like a, a treasure map or something along those lines, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming in the past, what we're doing here is we are, first of all, we are starting at our entire document, which is all of our HTML code, and then we're drilling down or we're getting a member of, of uh, a method actually of that object and I'm going to start using this term object because pretty soon we're going to be working with objects um, we're using a method of document which is get element by ID which is getting a element we're kind of drilling down in from the document we're grabbing a particular element that has an ID that matches what we've sent it in this method in this case we've sent it an ID of username so at this point of this set statement, we now have a handle or a hold on this entire, oh, I guess it's username, sorry, this entire text box. So we now have access to this entire object and all of its members or attributes, uh, ID, type, placeholder, and any of the other attributes that apply to an input box. But then with this dot, we drilled down even further and we got very specific and said, not only do we want that object, but we want the value of that object which is whatever the user typed in. So this entire um, chain or statement, if you will, is now returning a single piece of information, which is a string that is then put into the name. So that as opposed to this particular statement, which drilled down as far as first it got the document and then it got a single piece or single element in that document, which was whatever the ID of greeting is, so at this point, at the end of this, sent, this statement, we have a handle on this entire, or we have a hold, or we have a variable, the greeting, that is associated with this entire uh, element. So all of the properties that are associated with the p tag are included in this variable. So very different between the name, which has a single string returned by this property, as opposed to the greeting, which has this entire uh, object in its, in its uh, as a variable. That, that's what this is holding. So this is holding an object, this entire P element, and this is holding a string, and that's a very specific attribute within this, uh, the input tag. To kind of bring that point home even more, I'm going to um, utilize that concept. So I'm going to comment this out and we're going to use the name to get just that object. So let's do this. So now recognize that instead of getting just the value, we're getting the entire uh, object, which is this entire input. So the name now has this entire object, which then also has members that we can address individually. Um, and here's why I'm doing that. What, what The first part of our task then is to check to see if the user typed something in the value of the input box when this button was clicked. And so just for simplicity, I'm gonna comment these out and we're just gonna have these, uh, these two variables to start with. 
Okay, so we want to check to see if the value of if the user typed anything in. So what I'm going to do is an if statement. If the name, which is this object that we have a hold of, and now I want to get a specific piece of it, which is similar to what we did up here where we got the value, but now I'm going to do it here, dot value, uh, is compared to, um, remember this is a comparison and not an assignment, so I need two equal sign. So if the user didn't type anything in, that's an empty string, this is blank, nothing got returned, then this will evaluate to true, and what will we do in that case? Well, in that case, we're going to do two things we were going to change that placeholder from saying your name to saying enter a name. So remember that we now have a hold on our variable the name has, is this entire object so we can get at a specific attribute in other words placeholder with the period. So the name placeholder oops I didn't mean to do that place if you're from C sharp you use uh, enter instead of tab there we go um, is equal to, and we're going to make it enter your name. Okay, so that should work. Let's just run that and see if it works. So right now, if we type in click button, we see that enter your name has in fact changed. But we also want to change the text color. So I want you to remember back to your CSS days. Hopefully they're not that far away. And remember that we use style. So uh, if we had an inline tag like um, uh, style, equals uh, color red. Does that look familiar? Hopefully the answer was yes. So this idea in mind, that's an attribute of input. It's an attribute of every element, but I'm just gonna get rid of it for now. So what we can do then is the name dot style, just like we saw below. But now we're going to, and just like any other CSS style you've used before, I can do color equals, and I'm gonna change it to red. So anytime you want to style something like you're used to doing in CSS, but you want to do it with JavaScript, you can use this dot style attribute and then the dot and whatever your property was and then your value. It's very similar to what we just did below. So that should now change the text of this color, the text color to red. So let's see if it works. So click on your button and sure enough, enter your name um, is now red because it's got CSS styling from our JavaScript. All right, and so then the idea is else, uh, otherwise if they did put in a name, we're going to want to change the inner HTML. Remember we used inner HTML of this, so that was, we already have a hold of it. We have a hold of it with greeting. So the greeting is holding on to this uh, element that is signet, signet, sig, labeled, let's do sig, significant, no, labeled with an ID of greeting, which is this paragraph. So remember, we can then use the greeting, and then we can use inner HTML, which is a property that we can set, and the inner HTML is all of the text that's in between that opening and closing tag. Um, inner HTML equals, and then we'll do what we did before, hello plus and then this time we're going to use the name and remember we have to we have that's the object so we have to get at the attribute which is value so let's see if that works so now if i reset this and i actually put in a name this should work hello kirsten if i leave it blank then everything changes so or you could even do the greeting dot inner html oops inner html equals oops I like that word oops okay and then uh, we should be able to change that to oops there you go so now we're seeing uh, how powerful get element by ID can be it can get not only an object so that we then can get to any of the attributes within that object because we have it in a variable or as we saw in the last video you can actually have, uh, you can drill down even further and get a specific um, attribute out of that document element by ID, however you want to manipulate that. And then we, we're starting to see that we can utilize, we can get access to these attributes and change them dynamically using this dot operator. So dot placeholder changed our placeholder text. 
if we use dot style and then any of our CSS stylings and uh, values that we've already utilized in CSS, we can actually style any of our text dynamically. And then using this inner HTML property, we can change the contents that is currently that currently resides within an opening and closing tag. Just a side note, obviously inner HTML isn't going to work with a tag like input, for example, because there is no closing tag. It would not work with image because image does not have an opening and closing tag. So inner HTML only works with elements that have an opening and closing tag, like an H1 tag, for example, or something along a div tag or span tag or something along those lines. So um, we will continue to elaborate on this example in the next video.